Hello everyone, it's Natasha from Treasure Books. This is one of those projects you can do in no time, a quick and easy DIY. I have a few examples here to show you of some of the variations that you can do, but basically it's a DIY tag booklet that we are making today. Really fun, quick and easy. And we'll do it all together step by step, including creating this extra stitch up here so you can have a little charm hanging off. All right, let's begin. For this project you just need two sheets that are the same size and you want some weight to the paper so it doesn't have to be thick cardstock, probably better that it isn't, but you also don't want flimsy paper. So this is just file folder, I don't know what the weight is but I've used this. But for this video I'm going to use two sheets of 8x8 paper pad that I've got here. Okay, I'm going to use these two sheets and they are single sided because the, the inner side is going to be hidden. So this is a good way to use up your single sided pages. You can use 12 by 12 paper or it doesn't even have to be a square. It can be a rectangle. So as long as you have two pieces that are exactly the same, I'm just going to trim this off. You could potentially use six by six as well. Now I just want to show you size wise. This is an eight by eight paper. That's the approximate size and the tags that you can fit in there are, you know, quite, quite big. Okay, so that's the 8x8. Eight eight. So a 6x6 six six perhaps would be like perhaps this side. Like I'm not sure. I haven't done one with 6x6. Six six. Maybe I might do one in this video. But let's, uh, let's, let me just show you how it's done. All right, so you've got your pages fold in half and just really crease it down really well. You want a nice crisp crease. The thicker your paper, the crisper the crease should be. And really try and make sure that the corners align and you're doing this rather than this, okay? I mean, these are little mistakes that can be fixed later, but here we go. So that's the first one. And now you can decide, do you want your pockets, just look at the design, do you want your pockets to be like this? Or like this? If you started off with a rectangle piece of paper, let's do one just for demonstration. I didn't cut that very straight, but that will do. So we're doing the same thing. We're just going to fold, crease, and then fold the other way and crease. So that's the rectangle and that's how the booklet will look. So you, you would want it in a rectangle like this. Otherwise, I suppose it can be like this too. So your pockets are up there or your pockets are here. That's the rectangle one. And I'm gonna do the same on this piece. This is what I said before to try and avoid when they don't meet perfectly. But if it happens, like it's just happened to me now, it's okay. Either you can fix it at this stage or we can fix it later, it's no big deal. Okay, so now I decided my orientation and I'm going to fold it nicely and crease, crease, crease again. I'm gonna get my other one again, same thing, and then put them into a signature. So just nestle them inside each other. So you can see that, perfect. Now, see these edges here? That's natural that that's gonna happen because you know we have all these folds happening, so papers are kind of <laughs> doing all sorts of things. So I'm just gonna trim that down. I am just evening up those edges. Okay, I mean, can I get any easier than this? I think you know where we're going with this. All right, so at the moment, what you can do at this stage is sew the pockets shut, like I did on this one here. So you can see I used the file folder on this one, and I just went ahead and did a, a straight stitch on these three sides before binding, before the you know binding stage. Otherwise, what you could do, what I'm gonna do for this video, and what I've done for most of my other ones, is I simply glued the pocket shut just up there. I even think I prefer the glued look rather than the sound look. So totally up to you. So all we have to do, we're creating pockets here and here and we need to glue this shut. But before I do that, I want to create a little opening here. And I want to, if I can, have the opening align when the little booklet is closed. And the reason why I do it at this stage before we start gluing is because I might need to open this to get in there, you know, to do the opening. So it's best to do it before gluing anything shut. Now, your options for the opening. I have used a circle punch and I did half a circle. Let's see if you can see better. See that? 
half a circle and that created a little lip. Another option that you can do, which I really, really like, is a little triangle like this. So all I did, uh, you probably can't see because I rubbed it out. I just drew two lines, just like that, and used my X-Acto knife to cut that out, which I might do for this one because not everybody has a circle punch or a heart punch, which is what I did on this one here. But for some reason, it keeps reminding me of a butt. Yes, it does. So anyway, that's the heart punch and all I did is just went in halfway just like that and punched it out. And for this opening here, I used this punch. It's like a little label thing and also went halfway. So you can sort of have a look at what you have at home and just work with what you've got. And if you don't have any punches, like I said, you can do what I'm going to do now with this one. All right, so the booklet is placed into a little signature. So we've nestled them in on each other and I'm going to find an approximate middle usually I would measure this type of thing but I'm not going to do it today so let's say about there I think I just did kind of measure going by these lines all right so I'm going to pop a little mark here and maybe a little mark here and here so I've got two marks here that are the same distance away from the outer edge and one down here in the middle and I'm going to draw, uh, draw a line so you can see what I'm about to do a line from this dot to this dot and then this dot to this dot and then we have that triangle thing happening and now i'm going to go in with my exacto knife and just trim that off so holding everything in place so then i will have an exactly the same opening on all my pages i mean they will align is what i'm trying to say and i'm going to start from the middle dot going out and just keep trimming until i go through all of the layers. All right, there we go. And now do the same on this side. Okay, there we go. Maybe I didn't go through all of the layers and some pages need just a little bit of help. Perfect. And that's what we have, a little opening. It can be anything at all. You might even skip the opening altogether. I might go ahead and ink all the edges. All right, here we go, done. That's looking good. Okay, next step is to glue the pockets shut. If you're finding this uh, kind of thing happening, just trim it off. That's just from when I was folding in half, obviously my corners didn't meet properly and that's what happens. So it's definitely not a big deal. All right, let's start with this one. We open it up. We need to apply glue here and here, or you can use double-sided tape. I'm not a fan of double-sided tape because then anything you put inside the pocket can uh, catch onto the double-sided tape. All right, so there's one line there and I'll do one here. Perfect. All right, and close and seal down. I'm sealing down with this slightly closed because if I do this, the paper wants to escape. So you wanna, you know, just keep it slightly closed so the edges meet really well and get any seeping glue. I'm pressing down and getting any glue that seeped down. All right, perfect. That's what we have, little opening here, glued on the side, and now repeat the process on this one. And done. Next thing we need to do is the cover. All right, so that's perfect because I'm just gonna let this dry for a little bit. And now for the cover, for all of my projects, I just did scrapbook paper. Nothing fancy, okay, because it doesn't really need it. Okay, this one's a little bit thicker. This one here, scrapbook paper. And then when you decorate it or pop something on top, it makes it even stronger. But you know, it really, that it's just a little booklet. So really it doesn't need much. I think this is, this is also scrapbook paper, but it's got some sort of emboss, embossing on it. So uh, what I wanted to do for this video is use the scrapbook paper, but I want to laminate it because I think it's going to look even more fun. So I'm going to, a choose a paper to go with this. Look at what I found the other day in the op shop. It doesn't go with this project, but if it was gold, it totally would. This is like some mermaid. Look at this. It, it looks like, I was thinking mermaid tail or fish scales, but it actually looks like snake skin, doesn't it? Well, in any case, like you can grab wrapping paper and laminate it to make a little cover. So I also have this self-adhesive book cover and it's gold. But sometimes laminating this type of thing can make it lose its sparkle. So I'm going to do it anyway. 
choose another piece for the inside perfect that's going to look really good so i'm just going to trim it down to how much i need just approximately so this alone can be a cover just like that and you can just decorate the front that's pretty much what i've done to all of my previous ones but i really wanted to laminate i need to trim some more yeah i really wanted to laminate this one for some reason it's just calling to me i think it's gonna look great all right so now i'm gonna pop this over this but as we know these can be a little bit difficult to work with these book cover sticky uh, papers so hopefully it's gonna work so i do the whole thing i don't usually do the whole thing like this i do it with a ruler but i'm being impatient let's see if it's gonna work it doesn't look like it's gonna work i'm just gonna work from the middle out and perfect it worked perfectly well no air bubbles and now to lift it off my desk and it's oh, it's not doing very well so laminating it will definitely help trim these bits off you know at around the start of the school you can find all sorts of these different book covering adhesives in uh, the kids section where they sell school stuff and they have so many beautiful designs and i really love and also it's quite inexpensive and then you can do all sorts of things with this sort of stuff so as you've seen now some of them are really sticky and some of them they don't stick all that much like this one for example but what i like to do with this gold one is run it through my embossing machine because you know with an embossing folder so then you get all of these impressions and everything sticks so nothing's going to be coming up and of course another thing you can do is wrap the edges and then glue another piece on top that goes in there yep that's uh, that's looking pretty good so i'm just leaving a little bit of space all around maybe this can be cut a bit shorter yes i'm going to trim that just a little bit because once i laminate it there's going to be a whole piece of laminated surface so i don't need this to be that long plus i can see now that it's not very even so all right that's better and also before i laminate i suppose i want to put something here at the front all right i'll do something like this three little butterflies just keep it really simple just like that and now i'm going to go ahead and have this laminated i'm gonna keep this for something else that's ready to go i'll be right back and here we go that's looking quite nice you can see the outline of the butterflies a little bit it's a very thin sticker you can't see any of it on this side which is what usually happens if you have like thicker type stickers on the cover so i really like this i'm going to trim all the excess off leaving a little border of course and done all right so now let's fold this again lovely that really goes nice with my nails the only issue with laminated covers and a little booklets like this i suppose covers that fold in half that don't have a spine that are laminated is that they want to pop open which is okay you can easily fix that issue by laying it under something heavy for a little while or um have a little closure here okay so the next thing i'm going to do is the binding i'm going to bind this in a three hole pamphlet stitch but actually it's not it won't be a three hole pamphlet stitch because i'm adding an extra little stitch up here for a dangly because that always makes everything special look at this so it's a three hole pamphlet stitch but we're doing a little bit of extra so i'm going to do the whole thing on camera and show you i think i have shown you that once before but we'll do it again all right so now we don't need anything fancy because it's only a little booklet so first thing i'm gonna get is a little bit of embroidery floss i'm just gonna go with black why not black and gold goes well together and it's not even embroidery floss it's yarn so that will do okay so the first thing we need to do line everything up and then we'll start poking some holes so we'll start here in the middle and then down the bottom here so just like we do in a three hole pamphlet stitch three holes just like that and then add another two holes up here with a little bit of distance from each other so you can see that another ho two holes just up there so we're creating we're going to have a little loop there all right now start binding as you do usually we're starting in the middle here going back in 
to the next hole all right and now we're going instead of going down like we do in the three hole pamphlet stitch we're just going to go into the first hole right up above here go all the way through and then back in again through the next available hole right above and here we go we're back inside and now you can tie a little knot or not just go underneath like that uh, tying a knot is going to give a, you a little bit of bulk here so it's not necessary or another thing you can do as well is double this up so you can go back out and come back in so then you have a thicker thread here so i might might as well might as well do that why not i'm gonna go back again do the same thing through and back in here all right perfect and now we've doubled doubled this here I might as well create a little bit of space at this stage it will be easier to attach things here when you have a little bit of space in my the previous ones that I've made I didn't leave any space and then I was struggling a little bit all right now we're going back to the bottom hole all the way through tighten everything and go back inside It'll be really easy because we're only working with just a few pages. So it's really quite simple. Cut all the excess off, tighten and tie knot and a double knot. And there it is. The booklet is bound. I didn't do a terrific job over here, but that's okay. So we have basically a little booklet with four pockets. This would be a really cool thing to do for monthly money budgeting and stuff like that. You can even have perhaps pockets turned this way so you can have the openings over here and then you can go through your uh, budget you know food groceries whatever um, I don't know what else do people spend money on craft supplies you know you can do that's just an idea that popped into my head all right so the next thing I'm going to do is just show you some of the things that you can continue on with and then we'll do we'll finish this booklet off so at this stage you can decide if you want to leave your booklet just as it is this is really simple here i haven't done anything to this one as you can see just did the four pockets decorated the front added this beautiful little charm oh i love this one all right so you can leave it as it is or you can let's see what have i done in this one We'll come back to that front so what I've done here this is really cool to get rid of your scraps so little bits and pieces that little off cuts right I have plenty we've all got plenty and then you're just creating extra pockets so now this little booklet can fit four tags it's got four pockets but if you put another strip of paper on each pocket you now all of a sudden have a book that's gonna fit 12 tags or 12 pockets and what I did here is I cut the strip, two strips of paper that complement each other and then I cut out a heart shape from the opposing, you know. So I cut out a heart shape out of this one and glued it onto this one and vice versa. So they kind of, I don't know if you can realize that straight away. So you can see this lined paper here and then this paper here for the heart. Ah, it's just a little extra touch. All right, so that's that one. And then at the front here, I have a book page, a little frame, this is a sticker, this is a fussy cut out butterfly, it's got little glitter pieces on it, and then this charm over here, just really simple, you can see, you can see all that glitter on my hands, and then tag sticking out, so you might decide to have tags sticking out, or tags not sticking out, in which case you would make the tags shorter, obviously. But I really like the tag sticking out look. So um, this one here, again, this is just a piece of paper. And then this is a sticker, all from Taperology. And then a little a tassel charm here on the side. And on the in inside, what I did here is this slanted pocket. So again, we've created 12 pockets all together. And I just glued down some extra slanted pockets. And I really like, I mean, we can go with this to all eternity. Like you can do another little pocket here if you want to, you know, you can go ahead and decorate all the tags. I didn't do that just to save time, just sharing some ideas on what you can do. So I actually really like this look. And all I did, I have a small paper pad, this one here, and I just cut the little papers in half and use them as pockets see 
really simple all right now this one here what I did on this one that's a little bit different from the other ones is I added this the strings and the tags so it kind of has this hairy top look right it's got a it's got a hairstyle right so actually this one kind, it kind of does too this one's got a spiky hairstyle and this one's got the you know side swoop okay and then all I did is you know sticker book page and scrapbook paper all right so this here this booklet is what gave me an idea to make this tag booklet because this I didn't make this one this one was a pre-made a little pack uh, it came in a little pack that I that was in this bag that I purchased from the op shop and it's a tag booklet I mean I wish I had something to do this large opening with and all I did is just added my own little pieces down here and filled up the pockets and all of that. So, and then I thought, this is so easy. All you need is two pieces of paper that you have folded up and then you just create, you know, a closure here. I mean, you either sew it or you glue it and then you need another piece. So in this pack, this was a completely white, a stark white, and I just added these pieces to make it a bit more fun and another thing you can see that this was all sewn there was no pamphlet stitch business so I couldn't attach anything over here but that's an idea you grab your three pieces and you just sew right through easy peasy you don't have to do any binding so I wanted to show you this one this is probably my favorite one this is from 12 by 12 so I used I did the exact same process but using a 12 by 12 sheet of paper it was this back here that, and it's um, you know a little bit textured not that it matters it's quite flimsy white on this side so you can't really you know i suppose you could put it in a journal but anyway i'm not going to do this one because i don't want to you know crease it but i did the exact same thing you can see from looking at this when you fold it up and then you fold it this way you get a six by six size this is a, pretty much a six by six right I mean you do have to do that trim here so it does make it a little bit shorter but you can see that 12 by 12 page folded in half and then we did that opening the same as what we did today uh, and here a little, I created an extra little pocket just there like a little tuck spot and that's it so I only used those two papers from the pack and then I rummaged through my other papers to, to see what sort of goes and then this butterfly here was sent to me by a subscriber and I mean, it is the focal block, it makes the project, this butterfly. I had to trim the wings down, they kind of came all the way out. So I just trimmed it down. And then over here, I attached a bulb pin. So we can do all sorts of attaching systems. And I have this little charm with the two keys and the heart. And I think, I mean, I don't know. I was going to say, I think this is my favorite, but in all honesty, like I love the idea of all of them some smaller some larger it can be they're all different sizes anyway so you can see you don't even have to worry about any size or you just need paper that's exactly the same all right so back to this one you can sort of imagine me putting in different tags and perhaps gluing things down or perhaps doing that thing so i'm just going to leave pretend that's all done inside and now i might add a closure on this one Perhaps just for now, I can have this little closure here, keeping it nice and secure. And it actually looks quite nice. I can go ahead and remove this. You see that? I don't know if you know that that comes off. And then attach other things on here. I might do that. We'll see. And then you just put it back in and there you go. So you can do that with Bulldog Clips. All right. For now, I'm just going to leave that on there and to attach a little charm here. I really wanted to use these feathers, but I've had this for such a long time. This all came off of a necklace and I have pink ones and blue ones. And I just cannot find a project that fits because it's such a bright color. Um, the lighting in my video today is not the best. It's doing its own thing. But anyway, it just doesn't go. But something like this, how cool would that look? I really like that but maybe next time so I'm just gonna have a look at what do we have would you like to have a look I like looking at other people's things so maybe you do too look at this is that a bit too much yeah four butterflies doesn't really go 
that came off of a brooch. So there's all sorts of things in here. Some things came from necklaces and stuff. This was definitely a necklace, I remember it. It can look like a skirt. These, this one uh, was an earring. These are those champagne, um, you know, for parties, you're supposed to put this around your glass and then you know that green is yours. Well, I've never used this in my whole life and look at these cool things on there. So we can really, you know, that doesn't go. Maybe this one here, not really. What else do we have here? Let's see, look at these. I got this off Facebook Marketplace. Somebody was selling uh, their mum's stuff. The mum was no longer doing crafting dementia or something I'm not sure and the daughter was selling all the stuff and I really got some beautiful pieces even though it's kind of sad but still uh, here's a little thing that that would go really well with this what do you think hmm no hmm look at this that looks nice all right we'll pop that to the side would you like to keep looking at my little box what else do we have all sorts of stuff, earrings, and you know, just fun stuff. I have these little handmade little hands. I got that off eBay. And I also keep, I still haven't found what I'm going to do with these, but I also keep these zipper things. So I have plenty of them sort of all over the place, not necessarily in this box, but I have a few in here as a reminder to come up with an idea for them. So who knows? If you have any ideas, let me know. Oh, look at this. How cool. I suppose when you first start junk journaling, you tend to spend more time looking for things than making things. And when I say looking for things, I don't mean searching through your stash. I mean going to shops and secondhand stores and looking for things. And then you end up with a whole bunch of stuff. This is years. I've been doing this for many years. And it just, and I keep using stuff too, and I keep refilling. This is from a necklace. It's plastic, but it looks looks like it's, uh, I don't know, solid m metal. So yeah, it, that's what I was saying. Like you just, your collection grows. And I keep telling myself, you know, sometimes I hoard stuff. Like I might think this is a perfect little piece for this project, but I have only one, so no, I'm not going to use it. And then I hoard it. So what I'm trying to do now is I, I tell myself there will always be more because I find somebody selling all the stash that they have on Facebook and then all of a sudden I have a huge stash of stuff. So I'm trying to say don't be afraid to use your stuff, but I'm really saying it to myself. So is this the final decision? It just, it doesn't have to be anything elaborate. Maybe I will add another piece. I also have this box and you can see over here those feather things I was talking about they all came off of a necklace and it's quite beautiful and bright colors pink and blue and turquoise but it just does not go with anything that I make like I've never made anything with these colors so it's been sitting in here for a while I'm sure I'll come up with a project soon I like attaching these long types of pieces onto tassels that I do for journals. But I thought I wanted to add another little piece on the little booklet I'm making at the moment. Oh, that is the one. But I also wanted to show you this. Well, now that I'm talking about it, I might as well. This is supposed to be my ready-to-go charms box. So when I need something straight away that's already done, I don't have to kind of put it together. Like, for example... This whole piece look at this look at that it's ready to go so I have this box of ready to go stuff like this also I could go and pop this on to this journal and it's like ready to go mm, and it looks pretty cool and then these types of things that I've made you know sitting down watching TV which really never happens I always say that you can do it in front of the TV because people do watch TV so I mean, I don't remember the last time I watched TV, but here we go. Anyway, so necklaces and stuff like that. Oh, look at this one. Beautiful. A bit of bling. I think this came off of a bag. And oh, look at this. This is a necklace and I just popped them all on a bulb pin and it's ready to go and be attached onto something. So those are my some of my boxes. And like I said before, like I didn't sit down one night and decide, okay, I need three boxes. Actually, I... 
I have more. But it just over time, as your collection grows, so do your boxes. So space is always an issue. All right, so we have one last thing to do, which is attach these two onto my little thing over here. So the easiest way to go about this would be to use a bulb pin or a clothing pin, one of these. But I'm just going to use the jump ring that's already on my charm and pop that through there. But first, I'm going to attach this onto this. Open it up. There we go. A little bit of bling never hurt anyone. Clearly, I like bling. And then the more space you left yourself here, the easier this process will be. If this is really, really tight, it's difficult. So what I've done with the previous ones that I've made really tight is I kind of get my needle through there, just like that, to create the space. And then go in with the jump ring, just like that. And now close the jump ring. And then I like it. Very blingy, just the way I like it. I mean, not really. Sometimes I like the whole blingy thing. I also have this tags box. It's very messy, needs to be sorted, but, oh, you know, tags and stuff like that. So I'm thinking now that I'm making the tag booklet, I might as well add some tags in. It's handy to come in here and just find what I need. What do we think? Do we like the tags sticking out or the tags not sticking out? I think for this project, I think I prefer the tags not sticking out. People always ask me to do a craft room tour and to show how I store things and, and all that sort of fun stuff. But I can assure you my craft room is pretty much exactly the same as yours, most likely. Boxes of this, boxes of that, papers over here, papers over there, unfinished projects pretty much all over the place, stuff I need to put away ideas I want to work on, and just stuff. There we have it. I hope you got some ideas and inspiration. This is a pretty fun little thing that you can do in no time. As you've seen, I did kind of go off on tangents a little bit, talking about other things, but as you can see, I made six little booklets. They're all uh, different sizes. And this one is laminated. It's not my favorite one. I do like it, but it's not. I would say this is the my favorite one with the butterfly. I also really like the size, but it doesn't necessarily have to be. Oh, look, there's a pocket there. I was going to fill this up. Completely forgot. And also I added another little tuck spot or pocket down here. I can glue that down as well to make it into a pocket. So that was quite fun. And I just love how you can just keep going with the embellishing and adding extra little pieces. I really love actually this effect. Love this. So it's quite fun, easy, quick DIY little project that I hope you enjoyed. And thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.